And if you like the video or any other content on the channel, feel free to subscribe. Okay, so this video is going to cover an actual competitive list I made for the Orc Champions for the Adeptus Custodes. I'll go over the list, why I chose each unit, and the general game plan for each of these units that I chose. I will highlight the stratagems I will be using to focus on to bring out the strengths of this list. I won't be going over everything about the Orc Champions in this video, only the actual list and the benefits the Orc Champions give this particular list. For this Orc Champions list, it's 2,000 points and I'm calling it Taxi Time version 2.0. Our Warlord is a Shield Captain in the Alaris Terminator. He has the Castellan Axe. And then we have two more characters, another Alaris Shield Captain with the Spear and a Shield Captain on a Dawn Eagle Jet Bike. For our battle line, we have five Custodian Guard, four with Spears, one with the Vexilla and the Shield with the Misericordia. For our other data sheets, we have two five-man bricks of Alaris Custodians. And five of them have Guardian Spears and five of them have the Castellan Axes. We have two Venerable Land Raiders for putting our Alaris groups into. And we have four Prosecutors. And for our allied units, we have Kyriadraxis and a Calidus Assassin. Now we're just going to go over the detachment rule for the Orc Champions and just go over the few stratagems that I will be highlighting for this list. The detachment rule for the Orc Champions is called Assemblage of Might. At the start of your command phase, select one unit from your opponent's army. Until the start of your next command phase, each time a model in an Adeptus Custodius character unit from your army makes an attack that targets that enemy unit, add one to the wound roll. And we also have access to Martial Katah as our army rule. If you have the Martial Katah, you can select either Sustain Hits 1 or Lethal Hits in the combat phase. And there's three stratagems I want to talk about for this list. The first one is Earning a Name, where in the fight phase, you can select up to two Custodius character units and just allow them to re-roll their hits and their wounds against monsters or vehicle units. Earning a name, it is character model only like all of our stratagems in this detachment. We can use it to help punch some extra wounds through on a tough monster or vehicle unit. One of the Alaris units along with the attached Alaris shield captain is quick with the Castellan Axe to help deal with vehicles with their damage 3 attacks. Also great for Catan and other damage modifying ability units. Our output with the Guardian Spears gets dropped down from damage 2 to damage 1 with a lot of these minus 1 or half damage modifiers. So that does really take our output down so I like to have a group of axe wielding custodians just so I can try to punch through some of these damage modifying abilities and this stratagem will help that Alaris shield captain just get a few extra wounds through with that axe. Then we have Emperor's Auspice, and this is in your opponent's shooting or fight phase. One Adeptus Custodius character unit that's selected as attack. Till the end of the fight phase, only the character models in your unit have the four funeral pain, and that will make a difference more for the solo shield captain that I have in this list more than the other characters that are in the list. The only unit I'll be using the stratagem regularly on will be that solo shield captain. I'm sure there'll be times I'll use it on one of the Alara shield captains if the unit gets destroyed, but mostly I'll be focusing using this on the Dawn on Eagle Bike Shield Captain. This is Custodius character model stratagem, making it more reliable on that solo shield captain than on the rest of the unit because I have to wait till the rest of them are killed off. We'll be using this stratagem on the shield captain on Dawn Eagle Jet Bike every shooting or fight phase if the shield captain is targeted by an attack. We can even bring the cost down to zero once per battle round if we choose to with the shield captain on the Dawn Eagle because he does have the strategic mastery ability as well. You cannot use this in the charge phase against tank shock though, so you will be a little susceptible to tank shock. A Fort Field of Pain on a Shield Captain on Jet Bike as much as possible will help keep this unit around all game, which will be really key for scoring points. And the last stratagem I want to talk about is Slayer of Champions. So this one is any phase, one Adeptus Custodius character unit from your army that has just destroyed the unit you selected at the start of your command phase as the target of your assemblage of might ability. And the effect is select one enemy unit on the battlefield until the start of your next command phase each time an Adeptus Custodius character model from your army makes an attack that targets that unit, add one to the wound roll. In addition, if the destroyed unit was a character unit, gain one CP. It's a shame only the Custodius character models get the plus one to wound benefit from the stratagem, but I can see where it could possibly snowball if we could keep on bouncing this around. I think we can use this to great effect in the combat phase though by charging two different enemy units, activate and kill the assemblage of might target, so you want to make sure you're charging the assemblage of might target. Use this stratagem to put the plus one to wound with characters onto the second charge target. What I want to try to do with this list is try to tar charge these Alaris custodians into units as much as I can and 
then bounce this Slayer of Champions back and forth. No, it won't be the whole unit, but plus one to wound on your character will be a couple extra wounds through, especially if it's the Axial Captain because he does have the three damage. The plus one to wound won't add a huge amount of damage to my Shield Captains with the strength of the new Assemblage of Might. It just might help keep us in the games. What the stratagem is is pretty much old Assemblage of Might because the Assemblage of Might before the Data Slate was just plus one to wound with your character. So you never know, this one could change to character unit as well. But for now, it is what it is. Now we'll go through each one of these units and just kind of give a general game plan and just some reasons why I took these units in my list and what I plan on doing with them. Start with our two units of shield captains with five Alaris Terminators. One of the groups will be equipped with Guardian Spears. One will be equipped with the Castellan Axes. I feel this is the Alaris Detachment. With the plus one to wound and range and melee against the Assemblage of Might target, it helps this unit the most overall. We only have so many character units. The Alaris Shield Captain with the Alaris Custodes give us so many different attack options along with some redeploy with Golden Light that the other character units simply do not have. The Slayer of Tyrants on the Alaris Custodes gives the unit reroll wounds against character, monster, and vehicle units, so it's really a lot of the important units in your opponent's army you'll be rerolling your wounds against with the plus one to wound if it is the Assemblage of Might. I will be putting each unit inside one of the Venerable Land Raiders. They will help protect them as well as get them up the board faster. For These will be our main offensive units in the list. I want to try to use Slayer Champions for the one CP in the fight phase. I want to have at least plus one to wound on my Alara Shield Captains if I charge two enemy units. Earning a name, one CP, targets two units to have the character unit. And then we have earning a name for one CP, and that targets the two units to have characters in those units to re-roll their hits and their wounds against monsters and vehicles. It's not game-breaking, but I like to combine strategies and abilities to bring the most in our units. So stop combining your Slayer of Tyrants or re-rolling your wounds against a monster and vehicle, and they can also use earning a name to re-roll your hits. Each Alaris has two shot, strength four, damage two from the spear or the axe, and then the D6 plus blast, strength four, AP one, damage one shots. Hitting on twos, add the plus one to wound for the whole six man unit, your character included. That's a lot of potential damage. Even if we pick a light infantry unit to use our assemblage of might target on, just to make sure we'll destroy it in the shooting phase, we don't we don't always need to pick the opponent's big bad unit for the assemblage of might, especially if we can't reach that target in combat phase where this unit really shines. And for our next shield captain, it is a shield captain on Don Eagle Jet Bike. And this will be our only solo character unit in my list. Quite a bit different than before the data slate. I usually have three or four solo characters, so that's a quite a bit different. It's quite a bit of a different build. Giving this will give us a speedy secondary objective point unit. Will be great for hunting down light infantry or single models like single locust heavy destroyers or a five man unit of intercessors on an objective will have access to that four funeral pain in the opponent's shooting and the fight phase we want to use this stratagem anytime we have the cp and it makes sense to use it we can keep this annoying shield captain on the table much longer than expected and single models make it much easier to hide behind terrain for actions or wholly within secondary cards the unit combined with the prosecutors and the callous assassin should be able to gain a good amount of secondary throughout the game. The lance keyword on the melee weapon means it does not need the assemblage of might for the plus one to wound in combat, so you can work around that as well. Next we'll talk about Draxus and her five custodian guard. Draxus always has been a great pick for us since 10th edition. Her data card combined with the custodian guard so well. Giving her already potent range attacks, reroll wounds of one or reroll all wounds if on objective we control. Then, to top it off, since she is part of a unit, she does benefit from the Custodian's Guard shoot twice a game ability, and she is not an Adeptus Custodian's character. She herself will not benefit from any of the Orc Champion strategies. She is a character leading an Adeptus Custodian's unit, making that an Adeptus Custodian's character unit, thus benefiting from the detachment rules. So all her shooting and the Custodian Guard shooting will get the plus one to wound if we are shooting into the assemblage of might target. Plus one to wound roll for the range and melee attacks of this already potent range unit will be deadly. And then her ability on a two plus in the command phase to make her unit on targetable unless within 18 inches helps if her unit ends up being the home objective holder. Sometimes four prosecutors just isn't enough to hold on to your home objective to defend it from deep striking enemies. Also helps to have at least one battle line unit for scoring with these custodian guard. And next we have our humble prosecutors and these four prosecutors are just for standing on the home objective. Pretty simple, 40 points, that's what they're going to be doing all game. Then we have our two Venerable Land Raiders. These two Venerable Land Raiders are going to give me some range firepower with their eight 
last cannon shots between the two of them. It will also help me get into combat quicker and safer with the Venvo Land Raiders assault ramp, allowing me to get out and charge with the unit inside even after the Land Raider has moved. We can use the smaller guns to soften up the assemblage of might target. I selected to try and kill it with range attacks if we need to. We could use the Clay's grab tanks in their place, and I will try that as well as this list on the channel. I think the Land Raider gives us more options to hold on to forward objectives though and be a bit more aggressive with our infantry. With this list, we want to be in combat, putting the pressure on the enemy as much as possible. We have no custodian wardens. We cannot stand on the objectives and just pray for the win with this list. Plus, where's the fun in that? I want to cut my enemies down. The last on the list is, oddly enough, the Calvitus Assassin. I know I did have this in my biggest losers. Still, the way that we used to play it has lost some of its utility, but there's some new ways to play the Calvitus Assassin. The more I think on it, the more I find different ways to use this Assassin now. She still is a great secondary points unit, especially with a lot of the new cards have actions or something that completes at the end of the opponent's turn. A lone off behind a wall performing an action is quite hard to stop. Even with our army being much more lethal now and some devastating wounds protection with Emperor's Auspice, we still need some good units to score points. We can use her as an offensive tool as well, which she was not able to do before. It was add a CP cost to a battle tactic, score points, and that was it pretty much. Now, she can be very helpful and annoying utility piece. Think about this. This is the way we play her now. So you're going to shoot an Imperial or your Chaos Vehicle and they have one CP and they're saving it for their Armor of Contempt ability to make our Grab Tanks a lot less potent because if they're in cover, they use Armor of Contempt. Now they're saving on threes, especially if you're shooting at a Land Raid or something like that drop her within 12 inches of that target, now arm content costs 2 CP and the opponent can no longer afford it. Opponent has 1 CP, she really becomes so much better. You're worried about an overwatch or a fight on death against our Alaris units, no problem. You drop her within 12 inches of that target, not anymore. Charge away, fight away, there's going to be no overwatch, no fight on death because everything's going to cost 1 extra CP for that unit as long as she is within 12 inches of an enemy unit when they go to use a stratagem, it adds 1 CP to the cost. So if the opponent is down to 1 CP, it really brings out the strength of her because you can drop her down on your go phase, smash them as hard as you can and don't have to worry about about as much fight back or overwatch or anything like that. She has that up down ability at the end of the opponent's turn you get to pick her back up so you get to decide where you're going to attack with so you decide maybe I'm going to put the Alaris Terminators into this particular unit I don't want them using armor content or some certain stratagems so you drop her within 12 inches of that unit because she has deep strike drop her down and then you attack away. Alright, so let's end this with some final thoughts about this list. I feel the key to this list is proper target priority along with proper use of the Slayer of Champions paired with the selecting the right assemblage of might target. We want to be able to taking out as much of the opponent's army as we can per turn because we don't have a lot of protection. We're just going to be pressure, pressure, pressure with this list. The Venerable Land Raider lack the Caladius tank's reliable damage, but I think they will do the trick of soaking a lot of the anti-tank while providing some anti-tank of our own, especially with the Callous Assassin. We can kind of drop her down if there's any armor of content, try to bring out the most of these Land Raiders. I will be using this list soon on the battle report just to show it how it works in action. I want to see if bouncing the plus one to wound with the characters around and building a game plan for it is worth the effort. We would need to save CP for Slayer of Champions, but the Alaris Shield Captain should help for one of those times we use it for making it for free with the Strategic Mastery and then saving it for the combat phase if we manage to charge multiple targets, including that Assemblage of Might target. So we can kill the Assemblage of Might target and then bounce it on to the next target that we're going to be attacking with our other Alara Shield Captain unit. It is the Wild West for the Adeptus Custodes right now. If you notice anything I missed or even ways to improve the list, throw it in the comments so we can learn what works and what does not work together. And like I always say, thanks for watching, thanks for stopping by.